In this video, we're going to take a look at negative exponents and how we can simplify with negative exponents. To set this up, we're first going to look at a cubed over a to the fifth. And we know a cubed means we've got three a's multiplied in the numerator. And we know a to the fifth means we have five a's multiplied in the denominator. We also know from fractions that we can divide out common factors. And so if we divide out an a, divide out another a, divide out another a, we're left with a squared in the denominator, but what's left in the numerator? Well, if everything divides out, you remember that it always divides to 1, which means in the numerator we have a 1, 1 over a squared. However, we could have simplified this a different way. We've seen a quotient rule which says that we can subtract the exponents off the same base in a fraction. If we subtract 3 minus 5, we end up with a to the negative 2 power. Both ways we have solved this are correct, which means both of these solutions must be the same. In other words, 1 over a squared is the same as a to the negative 2. What we see happens is the negative exponent does not mean we have a negative answer, but instead the negative exponent simply means it needs to move down to the denominator. This is what a negative exponent means. We're going to move its location. So if we have a to the negative m, remember that's technically over 1, we're going to move the m, or a to the m, down to the denominator. We have 1 over a to the m. If we see the negative exponent in the denominator, 1 over a to the negative m, that means we're going to move it up into the numerator. The negative exponent means move it, a to the m in the numerator, technically over 1, but we don't have to write the over 1. If there was anything left, we'd leave it in the denominator. We could also see a negative exponent on a fraction. And what we can do with a negative exponent on a fraction is I usually tr take care of the negative first. The negative means things need to move, which means the b moves to the top, the a moves to the bottom, and then we've got that exponent of m, and we can use the power of a quotient rule and put that on both factors in a second step. But I usually suggest doing it in two steps. 1, the negative exponent flips the fraction, and then 2, take care of what's left with the exponent. So for example, if we had the problem 2 over 5a to the negative 4, the negative exponent needs to move. Be careful to note the negative exponent here is only on the a. This means the a needs to move to the opposite place. We end up with 2a to the 4th over the 5, which stays where it is, only moving the parts with negative exponents. Similarly, in example 2, we've got 7x to the negative 5th, 3 to the negative 1, yz to the negative 4. The negative exponents need to move. x to the negative 5th is a negative exponent. It has to move down. z to the negative 4th, that's a negative exponent. It's going to move up. 3 to the negative 1, be careful here, that does not mean negative 3. A common error I see students do all the time is they use negative exponents and make numbers negative. That will never happen. Negative exponents simply mean move it to the opposite side, which means we're just going to move it up to the numerator. So in the numerator now, we move to 3 up, times 7, that's still there, and we also move to z to the 4th up. In the denominator, there was a y there to begin with, and we moved the x to the 5th down to the denominator. Now all the exponents are positive. Only thing left to do is multiply the 3 times 7 to get 21, z to the 4th over, and I'm just going to put these in alphabetical order, x to the 5th, y, for our final solution. Negative exponents mean we move the factor with the negative exponent, either up or down. 